diverted. Okay, we're talking to Depeche Mode. That's Andy, Martin and Dave. They've got the new album called Ultra and we'll take a track from that after this. Okay, Andy, what's been happening with Depeche Mode since the last album? Quite a lot, actually. It's a, it's a strange thing. Although it's been four years, we we're actually on tour for two years. It took a year to make the album, so we only actually had six or seven months off. The album's called Ultra. Ultra? Yeah. Any reason for that? Just a really great word, really simple, and I can't believe no one's ever done it before. I had to go back looking through like uh, old you know, chronicles of albums just to make sure no one's ever done it. And as far as I know, it's, it's never been done, and I'm really surprised by that. And Mummy can have the peach one, and then you can have the blue one, yeah? So... How do you see the new album in relation to previous albums? I mean, if, for instance, if I could call Violator number one, Songs of Faith and Devotion, number two. Could I call this number three? Well, in some f funny sort of way, I think you maybe you should reverse this one and Songs of Faith and Devotion. It's, this one seems more of a natural follow-up to uh, Violator to me. We use quite a lot of outside musicians on this one, which is something that we, that we haven't done extensively in the past. Songs of Faith and Devotion was a conscious effort of ours to actually go out and do something that was totally different for us and create a... a a sort of rock album, mm. which we'd never done. It was quite a fun thing to do, but it is a you know weird blip in our uh, in our line of albums. Why did you want to be in a band? To get out of Basel. <laughs> I fell in love with music at about the age of ten when I found uh, a bag of records in my mother's cupboard. You know, it was all her old forty fives. It was all old rock and roll stuff, and I, I just felt this immediate passion for it. There was. It was something that moved me. You've got to try and move people with your music, yeah. and that's what we try and do. And, you know, if it's just one person or two people, at least we tr that's what you have to try and do, you know. And people might say to about our music that it's, it's boring, it's morose and stuff like that. But, you know, I know many, many people that, that are moved by it. I've never understood why we were particularly doom-laden. I, I think we're, uh, like, fairly optimistic. <laughs> What about touring? I mean, is it a helter-skelter experience, like emotional highs and sort of depressing lows, that most people don't really understand what it's like to be in a band? It is uh, a very odd experience, because the two hours or so that you're on stage are really, in really interesting, really enjoyable. But, you know, moving around every day, like our last tour was 14 months long. I think there was a, a lot of pressure on the last tour, um, on all of us, and, and we all kind of suffered quite a bit for it afterwards. It's really hard after you finish the show just to go straight to bed, and I think that's why we all get caught up in some sort of madness sometimes. You're away from home for a long time, and it's hard to uh, sustain any kind of family. Well, I reckon nine years out of the last 15 away from our homes. Yeah. But I tell you what, my wife, I think she wants it back that way, because every, you know, I think she gets used to the fact that I'm away, away a lot. In the last two years, I haven't been away, you know. Right. Why didn't close battle, so does Ultra go on the road then, or did I ask that earlier? No, we're not this year. Yeah. If we were to put out, like, eventually put out a Greatest Hits and then to go on the road maybe with a couple of new songs and go on the road with that. Here I stand accused With your fist in my
Well, everything seems pretty cool now between you guys, but I mean, are you aware of the irritation and the contempt, I, can I go as far as that, that the others had for you at one stage? They couldn't even be in the same room. Does yeah. that seem like a long time ago now? Um, it does, yeah. And um, I feel a lot happier today, just with, within myself. I mean, to be, to be fair to the others, you know, I think it was a, it was a rough time for them, but um, for myself as well, it wasn't just that they couldn't be with me. I had problems just being with myself. To be honest, I was, I was, you know, a very kind of, I was a, what, what I would call, a, you know, a, a very kind of clever junkie. You know, in that um, uh, I was able to, for quite a long period of time, hide how bad I was. It's hard for you to hit a bottom, if you like. Yeah. Um, a financial bottom is something that a lot of junkies come to when they have absolutely nothing left and they're sleeping on a mattress. A lot of people that I know now that have got like that, then there is no, you, you've got to turn for help. You've got to, you've got to do something about it. I was, the problem I had was an endless supply of money. He never did what he was doing in front of us. He always did it out of our sight. So we couldn't even really be sure 100% what was happening. I've always been the type of person as well that, um, I'm pretty strong-willed. I can do it myself. I can do. I've done everything before myself, and this is something that you can't do yourself. You've got to reach out, and you've got to ask for help, and you've got to take advice. You know, and if you're not willing to do that, you're never going to get sober. You know. Dave's had a very, very tough time. I think he's doing amazing at the moment. I think it's been good for him. His singing is fantastic, and I think uh, good luck to him. <laughs> Oh, hello! Hello! Eddie, you up to? Well, sleeping and watching television. Okay, because like a lot of the publicity, obviously at the moment, is going to feature on you, Dave the singer, and Dave the problems. But I mean, like there's other ones too. I mean, like first of all, like I mean, was it a question of clearing out the fourth member of the band? Was it inevitable that he was going to go? Did he have to go? Did he have to get? He want, out? The truth of it is, Alan wanted to leave. We never would have sacked him. I think what happened was that Alan, during the making of Songs of Faith and Devotion, probably, pretty much, I think, you know, this might be presumptuous of me, but I think he um, had already made the decision. I think there was a lot of bad feeling, and Alan was very uncomfortable um, with the way things were for a long time. Alan sort of gave us something to prove as well, you know, he, he sort of, from his statement and things like that, you know, I think he, Alan didn't think that we could actually go ahead and make an album by ourselves. We had a team around us, Tim Simonon and his team, and, and doing the production. Tim's team is really important, it's not just Tim. He always works with the same programmer, yeah. and musician, and... So and he's got his team. Like, yeah. yeah. And an engineer, so, you know, that, in a way, Tim and his team helped to fill Alan's place. You know, that was, you know, we, we did feel that there was a, you know, a bit of a void there when Alan, when Alan left, because he, he was always, he has been an integral part of the band for like, the last few records especially. What about Anton's contribution? What is it? We, we always put Anton totally in charge of uh, all, all of the band's visual output because it's one of the things that we don't feel that we're particularly good at. Uh, Anton's become part of the team. Visually, we feel very comfortable with Anton. He doesn't only do the sleeves, he does all the videos. He helped design the, the stage set for the tour last time. It's almost a relief to know that Anton's working on like the photographs and stuff. Yeah. And... I've said you know, quite a few times that Dave's one of the best frontmen 
around. You know, he's really good at doing that. I tried to roll a bit of Elvis, Jagger, Prince, and Jim Morris, and all the front men that I, I found entertaining to watch, yeah. you know, into one. There's not many people to get the opportunity to um, go out in front of 20,000 people and uh, wiggle their ass and get, like, applauded for it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I found it very therapeutic to be able to sing the songs that Martin wrote. I was trying to, exp trying to express myself in the way I was feeling. Um, I couldn't have written better words myself. Yeah, Martin, in particular, is writing the best songs he's ever done, you know, and that's shown by the last two albums. I, I think the first uh, single I actually ever went out and bought was Donna by 10cc. Back Home. As in the football song? Yeah, 1970, yeah. It's not one of my favourites now, but I liked it at the time. I like Gary Glitter, but I wouldn't make a very good Gary Glitter. <laughs> um, an album that I played to death was um, Damn, Damn, Damn. I, I still think Gary Glitter's great. There's new words, new trends come up all the time, you know, but we have survived for 15 years. We're one of the few bands, apart from status quo. I think we've always tried to offer some sort of alternative and make, you know, make interesting music that, that can uh, make people think of it. 